I know that even in the United States, when you have someone like Donald Trump, I know that there is a lot of elitist liberal reaction. Like here we see the limit of democracy, but in the wrong sense, in the sense that you see stupid ordinary people are seduced uh, and so on and so on. Well, uh, although Noam Chomsky doesn't like me very much, I, I admire him sincerely and I must admit that I like his term. I think it's not just a journalistic term, it's a concept which he took over from uh, American tradition, even mainstream right-wing liberal, of manufacturing consent. You know, democracy is not only formal rules of elections. Democracy is an entire thick network of how political consensus is built, a lot of unwritten rules. And now I think the United States are at a very important moment, at a moment when this machine to, to, uh, to build consensus is, has broken down. Now these are moments which can be catastrophic. In such moments, direct fascism can take over but this can be also moments when the left, or whatever would be the new left, provides a new answer. So my first reaction to those elitist liberals who claim you see the stupid red, rednecks, white trash or whatever are voting for Trump is, yes, but it's your responsibility. One moment of truth in all those enraged people who vote for Trump is that they nonetheless saw clearly that this traditional uh, machine of manufacturing consent no longer works. To put it in this slightly bombastic and exaggerated Marxist terms, the ruling ideology uses, mobilizes certain machinery to keep people at check, to control the excesses and so on. That machinery no longer works. And here I'm not just a pessimist. In contrast to liberals for whom Trump is the ultimate devil, Ooh, it's a nightmare and so on. I claim, no, no, it's much more complex. Uh, of course, Trump is a almost, but not quite, proto-fascist phenomenon, but it's because they, the liberal centrist mainstream, because they failed. And that's why, not that I like in any way Trump. Trump is scum, trash, and so on. But uh, my but is, uh, uh, is this one. First, Trump, nonetheless, if you are a leftist, you should admire him sincerely. He did something wonderful. He almost single-handedly uh, destroyed the Republican Party. <laughs> you know? That's what I mean. You have two main vaguely orientations, the Christian fundamentalist in the party, hardliners, and this Republican, liberal, enlightened, big business elite. Both of them are more or less horrified of Trump. And Trump is vulgar, but in his very vulgarity, you can see a common human uh, baseness, opportunism. Now, I will say something horrible, but for me, people like Ted Cruz or you remember eight years ago, Rick Santoro. There's something much worse. Trump is a dirty, disgusting human being. Do you really think that Rick Santoro is a human being? I think that they are aliens. There is something so monstrous about them. So that's my uh, first point. My second point is that I never trusted this absolute obsession with Trump. Oh, now we should be all together just to stop Trump. For this, we sacrificed Bernie Sanders. This is how Hillary got us. Hillary is not just LGBT rights, a little bit more progressive. Hillary is today the vote of the establishment, even of the Cold War establishment. Uh, uh, for, uh, uh, do you know that most of the big names of, uh, 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 of neocons from the era of George Bush, Paul Wolfowitz and so on, they moved to Hillary now. Hillary is not only the voice of the liberal establishment, he is also the voice of, let's call it, Cold War establishment. 
Now in the last days, there was a propaganda against uh, Trump saying, oh, but can we trust this guy? He will bring us into a new world war. No, I'm much more afraid that Hillary will do this. So again, in no way I am for Trump. He's, he personifies what I was talking about, this disintegration of public values, of public manners. This obscene situation where you can talk about whatever you want. Again, things which years ago were unthinkable as part of a public debate are now normalized. Uh, open racism and so on. And uh, here I think political correctness doesn't work because political correctness is a desperate attempt when public mores, all these unwritten rules which tell you what is decent, what is not, break down, political correctness tries directly to legislate. This expression is to be used, that expression is to be used, and so on and so on. What makes me afraid of this procedure is the following. Do you remember how two years ago, or even three, four, sorry, when all this debate about torture began, boarding, waterboarding and so on, uh, uh, U.S. Army did something very nice. They no longer talked about torture, but about, I think the term was, enhanced interrogation technique. And this is, for me, an uh, uh, establishment version of political correctness. You know, you put a nicer name, like I can well imagine that 10 years from now, and it's not a joke, I claim, rape will be called, well, why not, enhanced seduction technique, you know. Like this basic politically correct idea that you use words which will not hurt the addressee. I, uh, I totally subscribe to this when we are dealing with all these marginal sexual identities which can traumatize you and so on. But I absolutely don't think that this is any kind of universal right not to be called in a way which hurts you. Let's take a big criminal corporation boss who maybe also wants to see him as a humanitarian. No, he should be publicly called with words which will hurt him, and that's the whole point, that he should be hurt, and so on and so on. So again, I, I don't like this narcissistic idea of, you know, the ultimate horizon is, do you feel hurt, are you wounded or not, and so on and so on. I mean, this is a very ambiguous topic. Of course, you can in this way defend gay rights, uh, the exclusion of LGBT people, and so on. But then, what would prevent... Uh, uh, what would prevent white Aryans or whatever, white power people to say, sorry guys, but we are hurt if you attack us like this and so on. No, in politics we have authentic enemies. Everyone should not be respected in politics and so on. Politics is a real struggle of life and death. Mm -hmm.